Hi, welcome to Speed and Science. This is Mark and I'm Udo, and today we're shooting episode three, Aluminum Cylinders, The Return of Hidden Oil. So Mark, where did the idea for the cylinders came from? Well, every time you hear a discussion about uh, hopping up an engine, it's nine out of 10, it's all about heads and fuel delivery, and uh, cylinders, they not being mentioned much, but uh, make no mistake, they, they're super important. Um, cylinders are subject to tremendous forces and, and pressure. Right. Uh, when they work, they have to keep the, uh, the spinning piston in line, seal against the rings, and, and so on and so on. Um, just to give you a perspective, um, on a four and a half inch stroke engine spinning at 6,000 RPM, um, the maximum cylinders, uh, the maximum piston speed, sorry, uh, is about 80 miles an hour. That's eight zero. Wow. And that's on, fast. Yes. On top of it, it switches direction 200 times a second. So by the time this video is, is finished, uh, we're talking about 60,000 cycles. Right, that's, that's quite a bit. So yes, wow. cylinders are important. Um, back in the day, Harley used to make uh, cylinders uh, in a form of a, a sand cast um, item um, that allows them to, uh, uh, to make it fairly inexpensively, but at the expense of um, extra weight. Right. Um, cast iron obviously is, is more heavy. Uh, poor heat dissipation, um, they were prone to cracking, you know, cast iron is, is, is fairly brittle material. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were impossible to repair past a certain wear, and uh, lastly, they never really looked good, which on the motorcycle is, is really important. I mean, it's, it's right there for everybody to see. Well, we ride our pride, right? That's right, that is correct. Uh, so, yeah, I remember uh, years ago when the mounting first um, set of um, our test heads on, on top of OEM cylinders and I was thinking hmm we need to do something about those jacks so out of that visual mismatch came out these beauties so Mark why are we using aluminum aluminum is a wonderful material uh, used in countless applications and also it happens to be engine builders dream so to speak um, it is lightweight, yet surprisingly strong, has a great um, heat transfer capability. Um, and thanks to uh, recent enormous advancements in a, in a CNC machining technology over the last couple of decades, um, machine aluminum parts uh, successfully replaced a lot of um, casts, um, that, you know, parts that were, were made previously as a, as a castings. Uh, for us, it present an, an opportunity to replace uh, the original um, cast iron cylinders with these. Um, so basically it's, a, it's aluminum uh, outer shell, completely machined out of billet with the uh, uh, custom made uh, iron sleeve inside. Um, advantages of this, uh, this construction is first of all uh, weight savings, so it's about, the whole set is about 10 pounds lighter uh, than the original, so that's, that's a free horsepower right there. Um, the operating temperature um, drop about uh, 50 degree. Um, the wall thickness allows for 60 tau overbore and after that uh, just the sleeve needs to be replaced and uh, it's not a disposable item anymore. So Mark, what were the challenges in designing of this cylinder? Designing a major engine component is never easy, and this was uh, also a case. Um, as usual, we had to make sure that all the, uh, the mounts and interfaces um, remain compatible with the, uh, with the rest of the engine. And basically, it is a bolt-on uh, upgrade uh, on, the, on the shovel head engine. Um, Strength-wise, we had to make the most out of available material while providing um, necessary uh, clearances for, uh, for hardware, nuts and bolts and, and, and wrenches. Right. An interesting one was the, uh, the oil return. Originally, um, the, uh, the oil return hole uh, consisted of two angle holes, one from the top, one from the bottom, and they met somewhere in the middle. Now, in order to do that, the factory had to cast sort of a over, um, like a hump, uh, to cover the uh, the oil line. Right. 
And uh, visually, that wasn't exactly an aesthetic feature at all. So we decided to um, to go a different route and uh, hide the middle portion of the uh, the oil line uh, between the aluminum shell and, uh, and an inter sleeve. Um, to make that happen, it required a fairly complex five-axis motion, but that's how we roll. So, Mark, how are these cylinders made? Many attempts have been made in the past um, to make and manufacture aluminum-based uh, shovel head cylinders, and none of it really uh, took off for a variety of reasons, but um, as simple as the, as, as the concept uh, really is, the main uh, challenge is in the, in the actual manufacturing process. It requires an utmost precision in order right. to make everything work and be solid and stable under operating condition. Um, we don't take any chances and for instance on the, uh, on the shells, um, the inner bore where, where, where it interfaces with the, uh, with the sleeve, we have 0 0.00025 of a tau tolerance. Yes, that's a quarter of a tau. And the uh, same thing on a sleeve, 0 0.00025 of a tau. So that gives us worst case scenario, uh, it gives us an assembly tolerance of half a tau, which is more than sufficient in any case to, uh, to make a reliable product. And um, I must say that we are very, very proud to have this made entirely in our Canadian facility. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.